yesterday we felt like we had a, a great day, Coach Slinskin. Just a couple of kind of recaps that we took away. You know, talking about that proper state of mind. We really was big on today, like being in that moment. So again, finding that proper state of mind as Coach O'Neill gets up here to really get the most out of his presentation. You know, just a few takeaways uh, as reminders. You know, yesterday Coach Slinskin said, you know, there's not bad days, there's bad moments. Okay, so even today, if you had a couple bad moments, and hey, now this is the, the time to kind of get past those and, and get back centered in and really take something away. Be present, kind of that monotasking. You know, even for 20 minutes, honestly, uh, for an athlete in this generation, just to spend 20 minutes off of your phone is kind of a big deal now. Okay, it's really hard for, for some of us to do that just in this generation. So uh, that monotasking idea and just talking about, you know, every day is new again. What are you going to do today that's going to separate you? Um, is it just your level of focus as you're hearing the next speaker and so forth? So Coach O'Neill, I mean, he is awesome. He was actually a speaker, I think, maybe our first uh, saw week, first or second one there, uh, extremely dynamic. Uh, most of you hopefully have had him in class or at least know him around the school, but I want to give you just a little bit of background to some of his coaching career so you understand, uh, like, what a success he has been here. First off, he's coached for 19 seasons. Yeah, obviously, he just stepped down this past season just to, to spend more time with family, which I think is, you know, obviously very admirable and something to just take away as well. Just putting the family first uh, at that critical juncture is, is huge. You know, he's been the head coach here for 12 seasons. Uh, his career dual meet record, listen to this, is 380. Now, you're looking at about an 80% winning percentage, and that is outstanding. Uh, he's been a sectional champion, uh, HCC champion, Hamilton County champs. He's had 41 regular season tournament championships, 19 state qualifiers, 9 state medalists, 1 state runner-up. Uh, he's had 13 wrestlers that have gone on to compete at the collegiate level. <coughs> Obviously, preparing them you know, for the future as well is huge. He's been Hamilton County Wrestling Coach of the Year six times. Okay, six times out of those 12 seasons as coach. Right there, that's a impressive stat. Okay, and then the HCC coach of the year back in 2006. Now, he didn't ask me to say all that. He's extremely humble. He wouldn't even want those stats read. But I'm just telling you what a dynamic speaker you have today. So please lock in, and he's going to definitely give you some insight you can take with you. Coach O'Neill. three girls or three guys at the mall, two of which are really good looking, and then they have the token friend that's there to make themselves feel better. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That's me, okay? We've got Coach Litskin, who's probably the greatest coach that we've ever had at Westfield High School. And you got Coach Gilbert, who's coming up tomorrow, okay, who's right now running the most successful program in Hamilton County. And who can you sandwich between those two but this disgusting fat turtle? You know, that's me. That's my role. And uh, a, lot of these, a lot of what you heard from Coach Litskin yesterday and a lot of what you're going to hear from Coach uh, Gilbert tomorrow and a lot of what you're going to hear on Thursday from our speaker and Friday from our alumni are all about how to get to where you want to go. Okay? How do you get there? What's it take? Today, my focus is slightly different, okay? My focus is, what's blocking me? What's the roadblock that I've had so many athletes and so many people that I've cared about trip up on, on their way to, uh, in their high school athletic career? So, you know, go ahead, Coach, sorry, I kind of, let's be honest, why are we here? Okay, some of you are here because you're told to be. Some of you choose to be here. You pick something in your life, and for, for most of you, it's something athletic, that you are passionate about. You want to be good. Okay, but the truth be told, simply put, you don't know how to get there. Okay, and what is my role here today? Like I said to you, what are the roadblocks that are hitting 14 to 19 year old Hamilton County athletes over the past 20 years? Okay, for some of you, you'll identify with every one of these. For others of you, you may only identify with a handful. Okay, but these are the things to be mindful of. So, first thing, here's my first thing. You know, I'm kind of a phrase guy. You know, I like Coach Liskin, wherever he's at, he's awesome. He makes up this word, Sisu. I've never even heard of it. Okay, but all of his, like, cult members, they all follow him. Okay? Coach Gilbert, my man, he's got people, like, walking around with plastic forks in their head. Okay? I don't know how he does it, but he does it. 
Okay, I'm not that intelligent. I just got, don't confuse simple with easy. Okay, everything you're going to hear this week is going to sound simple. It's going to sound very simple. You know, how do you win a football game? Score more points than they do. That's pretty simple. You know, how do you win the 100 meter dash? Run faster than the dude next to you. Okay, those are simple tasks, but it is not easy. It is not easy at all. And to get this, you know, you have to have these, you know, six to seven core values. You have to have discipline. You have to have sacrifice, hard work, dedication, responsibility, accountability. And I put many times our environment make this tougher than what we think. What do I mean by that? How many of you are fortunate enough to live in a home where your parent, your guardian, tries to protect you from every adverse condition there can be? They don't want you to face it. Be honest. They're trying to... Right there, just three of you? Holy smokes. Man, I'm speaking to the wrong group. Okay, because I'll be honest with you. In the pool, in the wrestling mat, basketball court, football field, there's nowhere to hide. Okay? You have no one to hide. Let's talk about accountability for a minute. I think most of you right here athletically probably do a great job holding yourself accountable. You probably do a great job. Okay? You get a little bit of motivation. But where is the accountability in the rest of your life? Quick show of hands. How many of you have been late to a class this trimester? Be honest, I've been late. Okay? What happened? What happened? Nothing. Nothing. Right? How many of you have had your cell phone out in class? Be honest. Yeah, I did. What happened? Nothing. Nothing. Let me ask you this. What happened? If in whatever sport it is you choose to excel in, what happens if you roll in late to practice? How's that going to work out for you? Not too good. Not too good. Excuse me. Excuse me for a moment. Could you imagine if you would? Okay? Coach Sumter is given his halftime speech. Halftime score is 31-31. Shamrocks versus the Greyhounds. And one of his players, I told him, man, I got a text. Could you give? Could you imagine what would happen? Okay. The problem is, your generation holds yourself accountable in one avenue. You need to hold yourself accountable in all avenues if you want to take the next step. Okay. It is not easy, but it's pretty simple. Next one, coach. Here's a big one. Do you wish to be good, or do you truly want to be good? Okay. Do you wish to be good, or do you want to be good? Back when I was growing up, and some of the other coaches in this room were growing up, it was enough to just lift. It was enough to just train in season. Is that enough anymore? No. No. Do you think there's any athletic program in Hamilton County that does just that? No. No. If you do just that, you're just wishing to be good, ladies and gentlemen. You are not wanting to be good. And down here at the bottom, okay, I put a quote. Obviously, wrestling is my background. This is one of my favorite quotes. It says, this is about marching to the beat of your own drum. That no matter what, you're going to be successful. Not just metal. Gold metal. Okay? Not just metal. Gold metal. And I'll tell you a story really quickly about probably the most successful wrestler I ever had. His name was Lucas Schaefer. Lucas Schaefer went on to wrestle at the Naval Academy. Entered his, uh, the state championship match. 53 and 0. He was 53 and 0 his senior year, got to be his final match. Okay? It's prom, his junior year. Prom day. Big deal for most of you guys, right? What do you do on prom day? You get ready, you make sure you're ready to go. You know what Schaefer did? He got a lift in, he went out for a run, and he came into school and got a workout in. And then he went to prom. Why? He wanted to be good. He didn't wish to be good. He wanted to be good. Everybody got it? Let me ask you this. How many of you have go, will go on spring break? Be honest. I'm going to go on spring break somewhere. Be honest. Don't be bashful. Have you started thinking about your training regimen on spring break? Meaning, are you going to get a workout in? Okay. Are you going to go for a run? Okay. Are you going to go find another school to get a workout You know, on their baseball diamond, whatever it might be? You have to take the little things. Okay. You can't wish to be good. You have to want to be good. Go ahead, next one, coach. 
Never let the name on the outside of the jersey defeat you. Okay? Never let the name on the outside of the jersey defeat you. And the first thing I have up there is Lafayette Jefferson High School versus Westfield High School. I don't know how many of you were there this year at the sectional game Friday. One of my best friends coaches Lafayette Jeff's high school wrestling team. And I had the privilege of being on the Lafayette Jeff's sideline for the sectional football game. And before the game even started, before kickoff happened, I was standing there on the sideline, and I'm watching these guys in their black jerseys and with the red outlines, okay? And they said, dude, look at the size of that 76. Okay? Look at the size of 79. Holy cow. Can you see that running back? Now, have, it, have they even played a, a lick of football yet? No. But what's, what's their mindset? Are they going to win? No. For those of you who are there, what did we score? 14 points in about 17 seconds? You know what I mean? The game was over before it started. Right here I say the growing pains of Westfield High School through the years. My first ever conference tournament that I coached in here at Westfield was at Indianapolis Cecina High School. They were in our conference, weren't they, Bill? Okay. First time I ever coached in the conference tournament, we're down at Cecina. Some of you, yes, that's a school. Okay. The very next year, we went from wrestling Cecina, Tri-Central, Hamilton Heights, every corner of Clinton County, so all of a sudden, now we got Avon, we got Brownsburg, we got, and for you guys, it's old hat. But for them, okay, we, for many of our wrestlers, we were beat by the name on our singlet, or the name on our opponent's singlet, before we even stepped on the mat. Everybody understand? Never allow the name to beat you. Make the person inside the uniform defeat you. Very, very common ro roadblock. Side nugget. Sorry. What's the most simple way to win? May not be the easiest, but the most simple. Score more points is simple, but that's not the easiest way to win. The easiest way to win, make your opponent quit. Make things so tough on them that they quit. If you've never had that opportunity, it's awesome. Okay? So a little side nugget. I felt it fit in right there. So there we go. Next one. Big one. Big one. How about this? Be honest. Be honest. How many of you felt that a coach has kind of given you the shafts, been passed over? You you did you deserve better than what you got. Be honest. Be honest. You deserve better than what you got. Okay? Be honest. You deserve more playing time. You deserve to be the captain. You deserve to be the starter. Ladies and gentlemen, for the rest of your life, keep this in mind. You get what you earn. You don't get what you deserve. <coughs> never, never in your life will you get what you deserve. Okay? It's true in the athletics. It's true in academics. It's true in the workplace. Now let's talk about why for a minute. If, okay, if you think that you deserve to be the starting guard on the girls' basketball team, okay, you deserve it. Who gets to make that choice? Do you get to make that choice? No, who makes that choice? The coach. The coach makes that choice. And what you're doing by deserving is you're empowering the coach. Okay? If I deserve it, then coach is going to recognize my efforts. The coach is going to give me the accolades. I deserve to be all state. I deserve to be the captain. What you're saying is I expect someone else to recognize me. Compared to earning. If you go out and you earn the starting position, who's that on? Is that on you or the coach? It's on you, is it not? Okay. If you go out and earn it, it empowers yourself. If you wait to get what you deserve, it empowers others. Everybody understand the difference? Okay. Next one, please. Motivation and work. We've got it all backwards. Holy smokes. Motivation and work, we've got it all backwards. How many, I, I know I'm guilty of it, maybe you've done it. You ever think, man, I'm going to, and I'm just going to take some time off, and then when I get motivated, then I'm really going to hit the weight room. Then I'm really going to put the time in on the tennis court. Then I'm really going to put the miles in on the street. 
Guess what happens? Does the motivation ever come? Rarely. And all of that opportunity to improve has passed you. However, if you have hard work, if you go into the weight room and all of a sudden you were a freshman kid, I never call anybody out, Mahoney, and then all of a sudden you couldn't, you couldn't bench press your weight. But then all of a sudden you keep working, you keep working, you keep working, you keep working, and then all of a sudden you start noticing gains. Will you get motivated? Absolutely. So we've got it backwards, ladies and gentlemen. Many of us sit around and wait to get motivated, and then we'll get to work. Motivation happens when we put it into work. Everybody got it? And some of you guys, when you go to practice, whatever it is, whatever athletic discipline you go to, you go to practice and you're waiting for your coach to motivate you. Can your coach motivate you sometimes? Sure. Sure. But who is the best motivator for you each and every day? Yourself. You earn it. You earn it. Love this quote. Love this quote. This comes from Jeff Jordan, very successful wrestling coach in Ohio. Said Noah didn't wait for his ship to come in. He built one. You may not get it, but I think it's awesome. Okay. All right. Now, when we don't work, when we're not motivated, what happens? What does that lead to? When we don't work, when we're not motivated, that leads to what? Anybody got an idea? It begins with D. Ends in out. Doubt. Thank you. Let's go to the next one. We have to defeat doubt with belief. Truth be told, doubt has been around as long as man. Okay? People have doubted each other. People have sometimes doubted themselves. themselves. They doubt you know, their communities. It exists due to ignorance, cynicism, lack of confidence, or potentially even envy. Okay? How do you defeat doubt? Doubt is defeated by work, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely defeated by work. I say the believer must possess a desire that is greater than the fear of failure. Okay? When you want something so bad that you don't care about failing, okay? when you don't care about failing, you want something so bad, that's when doubt is defeated. Okay? Young man, Robinson, right? Yes, sir. Size of a small sequoia tree. Okay? <laughs> this year, your football team won a few games, correct? Yes, won a big one at the end. At any point in time, did you doubt? No. There's no room for doubt. When you doubt, what happens? You fail. Okay? When you doubt, you fail. The believer is unrelenting, unbreakable, unshakable, rock solid, and by God, whatever it is your goal is, they will die before they quit. No matter what it is, okay? come hell or high water, you will die before you quit. Once you have that, all doubt is gone. The effort to doubt is so little, the effort it takes to succeed is so great. Okay? Think about that for a minute. How easy is it to doubt? How easy? Super easy, right? Okay, you've got to put in a lot of work, a lot of work, to be able to believe. Now, this is my favorite one. Prove the doubters wrong with a chip. Okay? Sometimes, once you get there and you put in the work, and you know that you can accomplish what it is that you're getting ready to do, you got to have a chip on your shoulder as, as wide as the Mississippi River. Okay? I, I'm telling you right now, there are, there are other schools in the area that say, Westfield will not succeed at this. Westfield will not succeed at that. This team will not do this. This team will not do that. Sweet. Let's roll. That's my... That's my Mindset. You doubt us, okay? We're coming right through. Okay? Compete with the chip. Do not allow the doubt of others to influence your perspective. And Westfield High School is the worst I've ever seen in this. How many of you have been in a class where during the announcements they say, hey, the, I'll, I'll pick the wrestling team because that was passionate to my heart, so we can make fun of me for a little bit. The wrestling team is wrestling tonight against Evansville Modern Day. You guys probably don't know them, but they're pretty good. Okay? <coughs> How many times have you been in a setting where somebody, somebody in your school, somebody who isn't even on the team said, oh, we're going to lose? How many of you guys ever hear that? You ever hear, oh, you're going to lose. Okay? How does that make you feel? <coughs> Be honest, how does it make you feel? <coughs> Makes me want to rip their face off. Okay? I know I can't say that. You can delete that. 
But that's what I'm talking about. I got a chip on my shoulder. Dude, you're going to say we're going to lose? I'm coming. I'm coming three. I'm going three counties through, son. Okay, don't you say we're going to lose. Okay, don't you give in to what people think about that. You believe in yourself. Okay? Eager to prove the down and wrong and prove yourself on whatever athletic facility you know you may participate in. Now, before I move on there, I want to tell you a quick little story about one of I don't even really, I think this is the coolest thing ever. Okay? Oh, do I got to end it? Or do I got to oh, you got 10 minutes. Okay? I want to tell you about the coolest story I've ever heard about athletics. Okay? When you come in from the middle school, okay, everybody is rumors. You're freshmen. You're like, oh, this kid's a stud. This kid's a stud. He's going to do this. For those of you who are ninth graders, that was like six months ago. Okay, for those of you who are older, obviously it was a while back. I want to take you back. You guys remember when you were freshmen, the one kid that they said was going to be the stud or studette? You guys remember that? Okay, there was a kid that we had like that here at Westfield. He was awesome. Okay, I heard about this kid for years. He was the who's who. His freshman year, guess what happened to him? He was on the freshman JV squad. You think that humbled him a little bit? To most people, it would humble him, right? You know what it did to this kid? Gave a little bit of a chip. Well, I, I, you're freshman, yeah, that's cool. You know, you're going to be freshman, freshman JV squad, no problem. My sophomore year, I'm definitely going to be the starter. I'm definitely going to be the starter. Guess what happened this sophomore year? He's JV. He's JV. He was supposed to be the who's who, and now he's on JV. His junior year, like, this is going to be the time. Guess what happened his junior year? Guess what happened? He was JV. Okay, be honest. How many of you have seen people that in that situation, they would have quit? Be honest, they would have quit? Okay, a ton. Right? Now let me tell you something. This young man was supposed to be the who's who as a freshman, correct? Sophomore year he was what? JV. Junior year he was? 95% of the population would have quit. This kid had a his senior year. He gets the nod and is finally the starting quarterback of the Westfield Shamrocks. You might know this kid. His name's Andy Sweet. What did Andy Sweet do this season? He led a team to the state championship because he did not Quit, he was pretty dang all motivated. And when 95% of the population would have quit, and I don't even know this kid, but I love this kid. Okay? He had a chip on his shoulder that he was not going to be denied. I think that's one of the coolest stories ever. I heard about Sweet when he was in eighth grade. He went to Our Lady Mount Carmel Schools. My my father-in-law built that school, and I heard all about this kid. He's it, he's it, he's it, he's in it. And every single year, being like a kick to the kidney, you're not in. You're not in. So keep that in mind. Next one. Power of just one more. A couple of years ago, I told you about a kid by the name of Jimmy Nichols, old James. For those of you guys who remember James, James was our king of our plus one. Well, last year I had an experience with a young man who had one of those guys that said he doesn't deserve to be a state qualifier. They didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve it, but you know what he did? Been paying attention. He didn't deserve it. He earned it. That's right. Okay? And at the we're we're drilling, man. We're getting ready to roll. We're getting ready to go. And uh, practice is over. You know what this young man says to me? He says, Coach, can we do just one more? Just one more. Can we do just one more? And guess what happened with that just one more? It became just 10 more minutes. Then it became just 15 more minutes. And then this kid that nobody believed in all of a sudden who out of nowhere was now a state qualifier. Why? Because he did just... Well, could you imagine how much more we could do if everybody in the room, if everybody was like, hey, you know what, coach? Whatever, whatever drill it is, whatever drill it is, you know what? Let's just do one more. Let's just do one more. Donald, did that pay off for us? Yes. Yeah, it did. We did just one more. We did just one more all the way through. Made it to the state finals. I think that's it, isn't it, Coach? Sure. Is. Okay? So, guys, those are some nuggets that have, that have helped my teams, that have helped me. Listen. Listen, I know you're on, on the way. Okay, these roadblocks that you have, okay, these thoughts that you have, I got a ton of free time on my hands now. 
Okay? If you ever want, to want another set of ears, another set of eyes, Coach, I'm feeling this way. Come find me. You understand me? Because the fact of the matter is, doubt is easy. Belief, work, earning is a difficult part. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, guys. Thank you for coming today. Um, thank you to Coach O'Neill again. He talks about motivating yourself, but I'm pretty sure that his athletes were motivated by that on a pretty regular basis. Tomorrow you have a unique opportunity to hear from a person who has just won a state championship in a sport that is very difficult to win a state championship in. Um, and he has taken a program here that was, um, he has grown it, let's just say that, um, to where it is a very, very highly respected program. Please come back tomorrow. It doesn't matter if you're a football player. It doesn't matter what sport you're in. Okay? As you hear from Coach O'Neill, you heard from Coach Litskin yesterday. Football players, you learned something from Coach Litskin yesterday. Okay? Everybody else, you learned something from, you're not wrestlers, you learned something from Coach O'Neill today. Tomorrow, whether you're a football player or not, you're going to learn something from Coach Gilbert. So please come and listen to him speak. I guarantee you, something will be said in the course of tomorrow that may change your life, that may change the way you approach your sport, that may change your preparation, may change you up here. Okay, and that's what we're looking for this week. Come back tomorrow. We'll see you.